Hey everybody, we're back here on Inside the Ropes and I'm joined by my good long time close personal friend, as Minji Nokalim would say, Justin Robert. Look at that smile. He's got such a good smile. My smile's rubbish. Justin Roberts, uh, WrestleMania weekend. Great to see you. How are you doing? Great to see you. I'm very good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Now, I have a copy of your book here that I need to read. Best seat in the house. And I don't often put books in the shot. But, like, the thing that's cool about your book is that if you read a book from, like, say, a Hulk Hogan or a Steve Austin, you get all this scoop of what they went through, but you saw everything. You were there and you saw everything that went on. Um, what was that process like for you of writing a book? and sort of putting down all your feelings and, and for that dream career that you had? I basically set up an outline. I just started typing the story. Uh, I started from the beginning and what it was like as a kid, what got me into wrestling, and then taking it step by step. All right, this is what got me into wrestling. It was Glow, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, Saturday Night's Main Event, Hulk Hogan, Mr. Perfect, The Genius, Brother Love, Bobby Heenan. And then what got me hooked a little bit further and then I wanted to get into the business so I talk about how I went about getting into the business if I wanted to be a wrestler if I wanted to be a manager a referee and going step by step and then getting into the business at 16 and what it was like working independence and then slowly working my way up the independence until eventually getting the WWE tryout and then what it was like in that process and then actually being at WWE for 12 years and then after that and you know, obviously, we, we want people to go and check out the book because um, it is actually good. It's not one of those ones you go, check out this book. It's actually a good book. Um, but like, the thing that's interesting for me is like, you know, I grew up watching Howard Finkel, and then Lillian Garcia comes in in '99, and there's these iconic voices, and you come in. How difficult was that for you? And were you were you keen to put your own spin on different names and different things so that people would go, oh, that's the Justin Roberts thing, as opposed to imitating somebody else? I too grew up listening to Howard Finkel. That's what I had in my head when I started announcing. So when I was doing uh, announcing early on in WWE, I was doing that deeper Howard Finkel voice. And then Stephanie McMahon had once said, like, don't be Howard, be yourself. And then I started listening and I realized that I was using this forced voice that wasn't me. So I just started my own style, not necessarily to say, this is so people will remember me. It wasn't like that, I just wanted to be myself as an announcer and then as time went on I would come up with little things to make not to make myself different but some of the announcements are just bland doing them over and over and over the following God doesn't schedule one fall the following God doesn't schedule one so I would try to switch it up a little bit and make it more entertaining so I don't want to put you on the spot here or make you scream at the camera but is there one name in particular I've got two in my head but is there one name in particular that you would announce a different way that you're kind of like I'm glad I did that. I loved introducing Batista, The Undertaker. Was that one of them, Undertaker? It was Undertaker and Jeff Hardy. Oh, Jeff Hardy. So can you give us one of those? Just one that you, one, whatever your, your, one of your favorites was. Just the name. Just the name. The way that you would do it. Well, I would do it in a way I would anticipate the reaction that name was going to get. So it wasn't like I would do that for every name. But I knew when I was doing Jeff Hardy that the crowd was going to be with me, or the animal Batista, the crowd was going to be with me. But I knew when I said, The Undertaker! It doesn't sound very good in a loud bar here, but uh, yeah, that's, that's the idea. That was something where I just wanted to grab you and feel that, because I was feeling the emotion standing in the middle of the ring, and I wanted to incorporate that into the introduction. Well, because that's one of the things, like Undertaker, there had never been a, an announcer before who would separate Under and Taker, and that became one of your things. Was that important for you to do that and, 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 and to have that different stamp? It, it wasn't anything like I was, I wasn't trying to get myself over in any way. It wasn't anything about me. It was being a huge fan, being a huge fan of The Undertaker, introducing him at WrestleMania. Like when I was a kid, that gave me chills when he came out. So I wanted to give him a fitting introduction. And I think the first time I announced him at WrestleMania 24, I probably said, The Undertaker, you know, very basic. And as time went on, it just, it was something that was natural. All of those were all, they were all organic. It was never anything I practiced or said, I want to do something totally different. It was just something that organically happened over time. John Cena introduction as well. Introduced him for years, but it took a long time to get to the big John Cena introduction. And um, 
obviously with with all the announcing you do, you've done um, with Howard Finkel, you grew up watching him as well. Any cool Howard Finkel stories about your interactions with him, or because he was still around, just in a different way when you were there? Right. Do you know that I used to call him when I was a kid? I did not. Please tell us. I used to call Howard when I was a kid because I subscribed to the WWF magazine and it listed out the people who work in the magazine and Howard was the one name that I recognized from TV. And at the top it had the office phone number. So I put two and two together and said, well, if I call the office phone number and just ask for Howard, maybe I could talk to him. I used to call him and bug him with very silly questions. At the time, they weren't silly. You know, at the time, I wanted to know if this guy was turning babyface or heel and I had a lot of questions and he always took my call. And it was really cool. And uh, our last conversation, he said, Justin, I have a feeling that our paths will cross again in the future. Fast forward to my tryout at WWE, and we were introduced, reintroduced, and um, the rest is history. Favorite memory from WWE? Wow. Favorite one member. So I was there for 12 years. And in that 12 years, I got to announce every pay-per-view. I got to introduce the ultimate warrior, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania. Bret the Hitman, Hart, Dusty Rhodes, The Rock, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, the list goes on and on. Any name that I ever watched in wrestling, I got to work with. So for me, that was the ultimate highlight, being able to do that. And just finally, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. Uh, WrestleMania 33 coming up this weekend. I, what are you as a fan looking forward to the most? What match or, or storyline or angle sticks out to you that you have an intrigue to see what they do? Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. The, the fan in me is like, oh, they're not really giving me, the fan, uh, the quality that they used to give me as far as storylines and storylines making sense and building up. So I don't know. Uh, what, so what, come up with something. What, no, what, so let, let, let's pick up on that though. What What is the difference? What, what are we not getting now that we used to get? The storylines used to play out over a long period of time and you could get behind them and they were consistent. But now, because they're so inconsistent, they're hard to follow and they don't necessarily make sense. You can't say, Oh yeah, this happened, this happened two weeks ago, and this happened last week. It's like, wait, this guy was basically a heel last week, but now he's a babyface this week, and then this is happening, and that's happening. It's just, it's sort of hard to follow. It's not, you know what I mean? It's not those storylines that just built up and made sense and were consistent. You could go back and say, oh, they were planting a seed three months ago, and then, you know, two months ago this happened. It's not really like that anymore. It's kind of spur of the moment. And a lot of that is because those shows a lot of times on Monday nights are written on Monday night, right before they go on the air. They say, hey, we're going to do this. And then Vince will say, no, 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 we're going to change this and we're going to do this instead. So they don't necessarily make sense, but it's what Vince wants versus a creative team saying, but that doesn't make sense. Uh and I, again, I don't want to take up too much of your time because we could do like an hour on that topic alone. Uh, but if there was one thing that you could do, that you could inject back into WWE for the fans, uh, whether it's a, a, a story or a way they do something, is there something that's glaring to you that's missing that you want to see? Like a, a particular storyline, like a specific, or just anything. Like, is there? Is there? Is it? Do you want to see titles mean more, or do you want to see? Is there one thing that you're like? If they did that, that would be a good beginning point. I would love if everybody could just get built up again. Do you remember the Attitude Era when everybody came out and everybody got a reaction because they had catchphrases? The crowd was into everything they were doing. They were into the finishing moves. They were into the people's elbow. Just everything. And now, for the past few years, anytime something started getting over, unless it was somebody that they wanted to run with the ball, they would cut it off. You know, they kind of hit that glass ceiling. That's actually a real thing. So I would say let the guys get over. If they're doing something that the fans enjoy, let them do that. Let, let them go there. Let the fans have a good time. Let the fans chant along with them. Instead of cutting people off, let everybody get over versus stopping certain guys and letting other guys get over or pushing other guys down your throats. Last, last, last question. I've said it three times. Okay. Favorite wrestler of all time? Hardest question. That's so mine is Hulk Hogan, but we've all got one. We've all got one that stands above the rest. Come on, who is it? It's a really hard question just because as a fan, I watched every WWF, WCW show, and then working there, I was on every single house show, every single pay-per-view, every single TV. So I got to see all of these guys up close, and they are awesome. These guys are 
awesome performers. They're incredible at what they do. To pick one favorite is hard. As a kid, I really liked Mr. Perfect. There was something about him, the ultimate warrior. Uh, the Undertaker has always been one of my favorites, not only to announce, but just in general. Um, I can't pick one. Is that bad? Can you pick one? Holding the camera, can you pick one? Have we got one? We're going to put the mic on the camera, man. First ever time. Favorite wrestler ever? The Rock, every time. The Rock. The Rock. Rock is great. Rock is, is awesome. But there are so many great guys. I can't pick one. There are a lot. There's also the Giant Gonzalez. I really like Giant. I love to, I love the funny suit. The Royal Rumble and everybody did the deal with The Undertaker. That was awesome. It got you talking as a fan. Like, that was cool because it was different. So he uh, he might not be able to go out there and work an Iron Man match, but... Hello. How are you? I'm good, bro. How are you doing? Good. Um, yeah, but it got you talking, and you're interested as a fan. Well, Justin, I want to thank you so much for your time. This is the book, Best Seat, Best Seat in the House. Get it on Amazon. What's your Twitter handle if people want to get in touch? At Justin Roberts, social media, Instagram, and Twitter. You know, I posted a bunch of videos under hashtag that path on my Instagram. And it takes you along the journey. It's basically this book. It's like 320 pages. If you don't like to read, I don't like to read. If you don't like to read, just go on the Instagram and watch that path, those videos. They're a minute long. There's like a handful of them. And it takes you on that path from being the ultimate fan to actually getting into the company, working independence, getting into WWE, and then what it was like being there. And I think if you watch those videos, it gives you a really good idea of what the book's about. But uh, justinrobertsbook.com is a website, audiobook, ebook, and hardcover book. Justin Roberts, I've been Kenny McIntosh. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed our WrestleMania coverage. Stay tuned for more interviews, clips, news updates, and much, much more. Also, stay tuned to our Twitter, at Inside underscore the Ropes, for more of what we've got coming up in the future.